For today's tutorial, we are going to make a bamboo steamer basket. This was a request over on Facebook, and I am so glad it was requested because this was, I'm thinking, one of my most fun projects I have made, and it took a lot of figuring out to figure out how to do this. So stay tuned and see how we make this. Alright, the first step is to make our faux wood. And I am starting out with a piece of yellow cardstock. This actually came out of this package. It's a 12 by 12 sheet. When I practiced this project, I actually used 8.5 by 11 sheets, but I think the 12 by 12 is going to work better. So that's what we're using for the project today. Um, I'm not, so since I haven't practiced with the 12 by 12, I'm not sure how many sheets I'll need. I'll let you know. I'll try to remember to put it in a notation at the bottom of the screen here. If not, it will be in the blog post, like always. So we need to turn this kind of pale yellow into something that looks more like wood. So we're going to start by putting on some golden sunset paint. We're going to dry brush this. And I'm actually going to, I've got, what I've done is I've covered my table with uh, craft paper. This is from a roll from Dollar Tree. It's over where they have, sometimes it's with the gift wrap, sometimes it's with the mailing stuff. And I have a really crappy chip brush. Um, I used to have one that was really beat up and I was, I thought, oh, I'm gonna throw that away and now I'm wishing I hadn't. So I'm going to dip this into my paint and I'm gonna get a lot of it off on my paper. And then I'm going to choose a direction, and you need to be consistent. And it's not going to look like very much at first. We're going to be, we want light. That one's a little dark, but that's okay. This is all about layers. And after we do the first side of this paper on camera, I'm actually going to turn it, turn the camera off. And off camera, I will do the back side of this. And it is better if you start off this paper and on your surface if possible, which I should be doing and I'm not. Not very much of this is going to show. So you can pick your better looking spots to have um, on the areas that are going to show on your finished steamer basket. But this is something you can do for a lot of different projects, but it is all about building up the layers. Uh, for this, because we're going to see both sides of some, well, we're going to, we might see both sides. We'll see it on a few pieces. We'll see both sides. We do want to make sure we have this done on the back side too. So I am going to turn the camera off. I'm going to continue this code and just make sure I've got it fairly even. I think I've missed a few spots because I can't get to them with the camera tripod there. When this coat is dry, I'll come back. We'll talk about what we do next. All right, the paint is dried and I'm going to do another coat of the same color. Now in between coats, I'm wrapping my brush in a baby wipe. That will keep it moist so it doesn't, but I don't have to wash it then because I only have one brush like this and I don't want to use this wet. Now it's important that when you're doing this that you let each layer of paint dry because once acrylic paint is dry it won't smear but until it dries it will and we don't want it to smear. Also the color changes just a little bit so once again I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to add a little more and off camera I will probably do, I don't know how many coats I'm going to need. I want to get this to the point where I feel there's enough of this color, then I will go ahead and add another color. For that, I'll come back and show you what, where I'm at and what the color looks like. But next time you see this, I'll have, I'll let you know how many layers of yellow paint I've done. So I'll be back in a second. All right, I think I have a total of three coats on here. I'm 
I go into this every time thinking, oh, I'm going to keep track of how many coats I put on, and then I don't. So now we're going to do the same thing with a brown. And this is the only brown I have in an acrylic paint in a bottle, and this one is Woodsy Smoke. It's, it's okay. Now I'm going to use the same palette. I'm going to use the same brush. I'm not cleaning them in between. It's okay if the paints mingle a bit at this point because it'll just be a little more blended. You see, my brush is still just fine, so I'm going to go ahead and pounce this around in there and then pounce it off on the side. Always pounce it off on the side of the paper. And then I'm going to... I mean, just a little bit of brown. I probably won't use a lot of the brown. I may only do one or two coats. I'll see what it looks like when the first one dries. Um, we're going to use at least one more color. I'm going to use a cream. Oh, that was a little dark. And the thing is, since we're doing both sides of the paper, and in most areas on our finished piece, we're not going to see both sides. There are a few places where we will. So in the places that you don't see the both sides of the paper, you can use the side that looks the best. And there are some parts that you only will see the very edges, um, and those will need to be touched up anyway. So those areas, we can put the ones like this, will probably be in where it doesn't show. So I'm going to let this dry, and I'm going to do the other side. Then I'll come back, and we'll go on. I think this is all I want of this color, so when I come back, we'll go to the last color. All right, so this color is dry now. Now I'm going to add this color. This is Vanilla Cream by Anita's. And this one is probably the one we'll probably use the most of, but again, I didn't clean my palette, which is just a lid off a container, and I didn't clean my brush, because the first part of this then will be slightly mixed. It won't be such an abrupt change in color. I'm tapping my brush off on the side, and let me, what I'm doing is I'm doing this motion. I dip it in the paint, and then I do this, till I see that I don't have nearly as much paint. I'm going to attempt to do this where you can see it, and I don't get it on my tripod. I have a very colorful tripod after this many years of filming. <laughs> and if you wanted to not do this part, you could just pick a color, like a beige colored paper and just not do any full wood graining on it. That's all up to you. I just wanted to show you the possibilities. Or if you've got paper that looks like wood grain, you could use that if it's small enough. Remember, you have to have it in scale. You don't want to use like a wood grain paper from the scrapbooking department. It's usually too big of a wood grain for what we're doing. But if you can find one that's really small, you could use that. But remember, bamboo is, because these are usually made of a bamboo, and that's it's got a real fine line texture or markings. So I am going to let this layer dry, and then I'm going to come back and do this two or three or more times, and when it's all done, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. And I'll show you the other side I've been working on off camera too. All right, here is how it looks finished. This is the side I showed you on camera, and then this is the back side. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. And we're only going to be using very narrow strips. So we're going to cut the strips. I've decided I'm going to do the base basket part of the steamer first, and then when that's complete, I'm going to go back, and then we'll do the lid as a separate piece hopefully all in one video. At this point, I think it's going to be all one video. So we are going to cut the strips for our basket. Now, you made your wood grain go this way. This needs to be the long direction of all your strips. Don't cut crosswise, because that won't look right. So I'm going to move the camera back just a little bit so I don't knock anything off the table. And we are going to start with six strips that are one inch wide. I'm going to 
lining up the edge of my paper. This is a this is an Omnigrid ruler. It's actually a quilting ruler made. You get it in the fabric store. They're kind of expensive, but that in conjunction with the self-healing mat are so useful for doing any kind of cutting where you need to make long lines. Yeah, if you've got a paper cutter that is big enough to do um, the the uh, 12 by 12 paper, great, you can use that if you feel com more comfortable with that. Cut it however you're more comfortable. But I think most of us do multiple crafts and have multiple interests, so if you, you know, use what you've got. So I'm going to cut six of these. And sorry if this is kind of boring, but in fact, I'll go ahead and turn the camera off and I'll come back when I've got all six of these cut. All right, I have all six of those cut and now we need to cut the pieces that will become the, that are going to be the, the bottom of our basket. And this one's a little tricky to line up. We need to cut two pieces that are an eighth of an inch wide. It's always harder to cut the really narrow pieces. And I'm attempting to get this cut so that you guys can see what I'm doing and I don't get my head stuck in front of the camera at any point. Now we need one piece that is three-eighths of an inch. That's, in, that's halfway between a quarter inch and a half inch if you're not familiar with your fractions. <laughs> All right, now we can put this piece off to the side and I'm pretty sure I'll need to make another sheet, probably a half sheet while I'll need to paint for the second, for the lid. We're gonna put these three really narrow pieces off to the side for a few minutes and we are going to start constructing the basket. So let me set up my work surface and get all my stuff together and I'll be right back. Now you need something to form your the walls of your basket over and I found that this was a perfect size. What this is, it's a pint size jar. This one had I think jam in it but sometimes you get pasta sauce, anything that's about three and a half ish inches in diameter is going to be perfect. Anything between three and three and a half. So we're going to pick one of our pieces of paper that we that we like and we're going to put the side that we like towards the glass jar on this piece. So I like that side. That end of it. So now I am going to mark where these two pieces join, where they meet. And I'm not going to go all the way up. I'm only going to mark it down here. And this piece, <clears throat> excuse me, we only want to put glue, and I'm using tacky glue, I'll talk about that in a second, from that mark to the end, <coughs> excuse me, oh, because we don't want to have any glue where it's going to touch the glass. In fact, I'm not going to go all the way to that end, I'm going to actually, it'll be fine that way. Well, yeah, I'll go all the way to the end on this, it'll be fine. And since it's gl glass, it won't have a really bad tendency to stick to it anyway. Spread your glue out. I like to use a toothpick for this because I can get in there and really spread it. And toothpicks are nice and cheap. And they were on my table. All right, make sure you go all the way to the edges because it's really important that this stays together. Now, to do this, <clears throat> you want a really thick glue and you want to spread it pretty evenly. You don't want to leave big gaps and you don't want a thin glue. This is just regular tacky glue um, and this will be perfect. If you use a thinner glue, you run the risk of your paper bubbling because this, because it's thick, there's less water in it. 
Um, so that means that it's going to not buckle your paper. So we're going to wrap this around our jar. We're going to line this up. We're going to make sure that our top and bottom edges meet. And don't worry about getting a little glue on the glass. That's fine. And then I have some rubber bands. And I am going to, I've got a couple of different sizes. So we'll need the slightly bigger ones later. I'm going to use that one and I'll use one of these smaller ones. And after every piece of paper we add on, turn it. Make sure it's not sticking to the glass. Now that glue needs to set up for a while. There's not a big chunk of glue, but we want it set so this doesn't come apart when we take the rubber bands off to put our next piece on. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to let this dry. And then when this glue is dry, I'll come back and we'll add another strip. All right, so this is completely dry now. Uh, it's actually sat for a couple hours. So now we can st and we're going to check that we can still turn it on our jar. We want to make sure every time we do anything here that we can turn this. Now this, this piece of paper we're not going to see either side of, so I, it doesn't matter. So if you've got some you don't like as well, like I don't like that part. So pick some that you don't like as well for this piece. Again, coat it with glue. And there's my toothpick. And try to be as neat as possible when you're working on this. But don't worry if you get glue on the bottle, it washes off. I just put the bottle through the dishwasher between um, when I made my prototype for the project and when I'm doing this one. Yeah, this was when I actually had to, to uh, make one from start to finish to work out the kinks. All right. Now, where you ended, so this is the end of my paper right here. It's overlapped like that. We don't want to cause extra bulk. So I'm going to butt, butt the end of this one up right to that. And I'm going to very carefully go around lining up the edges of the paper. If you can only line up one edge, make sure on this piece that it's the top one. Once again, we're going to put the rubber band on and see it does move. I like to put the rubber band on because it makes sure that this stays nice and flat and flush because um, we really want this to be together. All right, so that glue needs to dry pretty well. It doesn't need to be completely dry to go to the next step, but it does need to be fairly dry. Now, while I'm before I forget, I'm going to pick my next piece of paper that's going to go on the outside. But this time, I need to make sure I have one that I like the outside of. This one got glue on that side. So, um, this one's fine. I am going to cut off this little bit. I have a little margin here just in case that ends up being the way it's seen. Now, what we need to do on this is we need to mark down a I'm going to double check my measurements. We're going to mark down a quarter inch because we want a quarter inch down from the top side. And it will only be that top quarter inch that's going to show after we put the next strip on. Now that one is all ready, so I won't forget to mark it. So I'm going to let the glue dry on these, and then when they're dry, I'll come back and we'll add this piece on. All right, now this glue has dried completely because it's actually the next morning. So we've got our piece that we drew the line on. We're going to flip it over. 
and put the glue on the other side. And then spread that glue. So on the blog post, I'm going to put a little story time about the uh, this uh, project and why we're having it now. It was a request. Um, at least I don't think I've talked about that yet on the on this video. Um, uh, recently, when I asked on the Facebook group what people wanted to see for projects. This was a request from one of my followers over there, and it is something I've been kind of thinking about doing for quite a while. And then uh, it's one of those ideas that kind of started haunting me in the middle of the night. So I'll tell more about that story on the um, blog post, so I don't bore you here. We're gonna, again, we're going to line this up. Try and keep especially the top edge of this even. I've got glue on my rubber bands now. And I'm trying to keep this where you guys can see it, but still so that I can make sure that it is lined up correctly. And I know that this rubber band got in the glue and so did that one. I may have to go get a clean rubber band. I don't want to take, oh there's another one. I don't want to take a chance on putting a rubber band on here that might have glue on it because then it could stick to this and ruin it. So let's get part of it. And the rubber bands, I think I've said before, they're just keeping everything nice and snug. And it still moves. So this glue needs to dry. And while we're waiting for that, we're going to look at this, and we're going to decide which side we like the best. Well, this one has glue on it, so I am going to make a mark again, a quarter inch from one edge. And this is not a. This is going to be our glue placement line for this piece. This one is going to line up against the line that we drew on that piece we just put on. And it's going to so now we'll know that we don't want to put glue in here when we glue this one so I'm gonna let the glue dry on that and then I'll be back all right so this time we need to keep our glue as best as possible on the wide side of that pencil mark I mean, if a little stray is past the pencil mark, it's not the end of the world, but try and keep the majority of the glue, if you can, between the edge and the pencil line. It'll just make keeping this from gluing to the jar, to the bottle we're forming it on, a little easier. And it will look less messy when we're done. Because the glue does show when it's on the paper. And we're going to take the rubber bands off and put them in a safe spot so they don't get full of glue. We're going to line this up and we're going to make sure that the side, this edge that's not glued is towards the bottom. And we're going to line this up like this. Line it up with that pencil line instead of with the top of the paper. And try and stay right, just right on that pencil line so the pencil doesn't show past. And then from this point on, we do want to make sure we have a little bit of glue. it's going 
going to glue against itself. And there we go. And I should have cut that piece off. I'm going to cut that end off because that's one of those. It's This paper had a marking where normally I think I would see a, um, a perforated edge to tear the paper. But this one didn't have the perforated edge. It had a dotted line, which was kind of weird. And again, we are going to put our band on, making sure it's on the on the new piece and doesn't slip up onto the piece that's already dry. And yep, we're still loose from the jar. So we're going to let that piece dry, and then we'll come back and we'll add some more. All right, we're down to just adding two more strips. So first I'm going to pick this, I think, is the side I want to have for my final outside layer. So I'm going to put an X on the back side of it, and I know that I'm using this one next. So again, we are going to just add glue to the whole back. Spread the glue on just like we have on all pretty much all the layers except for that one, that last one. And I think when you take this off of the jar, you are going to be amazed at how strong it is. I knew it was going to work, and I knew it would be a, a fairly substantial piece when I took it off, but when I took my prototype off the jar, I was actually surprised at how sturdy it was. These are coming out even sturdier than I thought they would. So once again, we are going to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep this under camera, but also where I can see and where I don't make too much of a mess. We're lining up with the bottom edge and the top edge of the last strip that we put on that hangs below the previous three. And now we want this one to dry. And the reason we are drying this, in case you haven't figured that out, you may have and you may not have, we're letting these dry really well in between because we don't want them to slide around when we add the new layer. Because if they slide off of each other and get crooked, we would it would look really bad. Or we'd have to start all the way over. I'm going to make sure I'm loose. Okay, now that glue needs to dry. And when that glue is dry enough, we'll add this last layer, and then we'll start on that bottom portion of the steamer basket. All right, the glue on this is set well enough that we can go ahead and add our last strip. And we're going to be sure that we put the correct side out since this is what's going to show. This is going to be the only one that we'll see the full width of. So if you did have a piece, you know, if you have a piece of your strip of your strips that you one strip in particular that you think turned out way better than the others, go ahead and pick it out for at the beginning and mark it that you want to use it last. Spread our glue on here, and then while this is drying. So we get this put together, we're going to work on that kind of the cross hatch, the I don't know what you want to call it, the the base, the the bottom of it that lets the steam through. All right, I'll line that up. You can see this, although it looks really complicated, it is super easy. It's just very simple steps repeated so that they, you're making, you're basically I guess, laminating, you would say, the, the pieces of paper together of cardstock to make a much thicker piece of cardstock. 
Now, this piece needs to dry thoroughly. And I'm going to get a wet wipe and I'm going to dry off my table, uh, clean up my table here. My Because I don't want glue all over everything. All right, next step. And I'm actually going to take an old wet wipe and dry that. Because I really don't want it wet either. So now, I'm going to get a ruler out again. And these pieces that we made earlier, this is our, was it 5 8 inch strip? Or three, what was our width? <laughs> I'm trying to find my things. Our 3 8 of an inch strip and our 2 8 inch strips. This one, we're just, these, this wider piece, we're just going to cut in half. We're only going to make a, two pieces out of it. These, we're going to cut in, each one into three four inch pieces. So I'm measuring that on my ruler here. Now if you have a bottle that is a lot bigger than mine, you might have to do some extra strips in order to have yours come out the way it needs to come out. All right. Now I'm working on my ceramic tile. I like to work on this because it cleans up really well. And we're going to use a Sharpie pen to make our marks because the Sharpie pen will clean up really easily with a wet wipe or rubbing alcohol, but it won't smear all over my stuff I'm making. So I'm going to draw two parallel lines that are two inches apart. And now I'm going to draw a light one there. That will give me a placement. Now, I have one of these, I think, well, um, I got these at Hobby Lobby. I think they call them slim sticks. They're like a skinny stick. I'm going to use that just as a spacer. I'm going to get out four pieces of masking tape. And this is giving this a few minutes to a few seconds just to get dry so I don't get black ink all over everything because once it's dry, it won't smear it, but until it is dry, it will. That right over there. We're gonna glue that, we're gonna tape that down. I'm doing that because this way I know that my lines are parallel. I want these to be straight. Just over that spot. There. I'm gonna take my first one. I'm going to take my glue, and put my glue right, just, just a hair above that. I don't need to have this perfectly centered, but I want to try and get it as centered as I can. Kind of wipe off any extra glue. We don't want big gobs of glue there. Now, this is just simply a spacer. I'll put that there. So I want to make sure I'm putting these on straight and evenly spaced. If you don't have a little stick like this, just cut an additional piece of um, cardstock at an eighth of an inch and use that. But these are nice because they're, they're here and they're I like to do a couple of them. Make sure you take this out. <laughs> Ideally, it won't pick up the uh, strip when you do that. Let's get these lined up again. And I'm going to let this glue dry on this first two pieces here, simply because I don't want to disturb this. Make sure it's straight. Now off camera, I'm going to get my head over this and really make sure I've got everything straight. I'm going to let this set up. It will probably only take 10, 15 minutes for this glue to get set enough that these won't be slidey. And once they're, they're set up a little bit, I'll come back and we'll glue the rest of these on. All right, our glue's had plenty of time to set up now, so I am going to 
continue on down. I'll probably only do a few more on camera and then I'll do the rest off camera because it's just a repetition of snuggling this up. I'm just getting it nice and snug to the one above it. Putting glue and then one of my strips. Making sure that I lift this out every time. You don't want to leave this here and get it accidentally glued because like there's some glue sticking past so it would be really easy to accidentally glue that and don't slide that up which I just did. I like I prefer to do it this way than to add pencil lines though because then I know there's no lines that are going to show when I'm done. And this time I'm just going to take that out because I don't want to take a chance on scooching everything around. So I am going to finish this up. I've only got two more to do. Then this glue needs to dry completely as does this glue before we can go to the next step and then we'll be done with this part just about. All right, this is all dry and done. And I did end up having to cut one more eighth inch strip. I was off on my math and I'll try to remember to put a note about that on the bottom of the video. So if I did, you've already seen that. I don't want to untape this yet. And it will be in the blog post in the directions. So now we need to cut this before we take it up. So the best way I have found is try and get this as centered as you can. And I found I needed to trace the outside. Because when I tried to cut this off on the inside, I managed to make it too small every time. So I've drawn around it, around the outside of the thing. And now we're going to pick this up carefully because it may be slightly glued, but that's okay. All right. Yep, so it looks fine. And now we're going to cut right on that pencil line and then we're going to test fit it and hopefully this is going to fit correctly. Try it. We're going to go to the side. So this is the top, the part that's got the inset piece, and this is the bottom. I want to make sure that we have the, where the pieces are glued on is going to be on the top of this. And yes, now we can just trim this just a tiny bit. Whoops, I am not glued on there. Well, I'll do that when I do it, when I put it on. So we're going to trim back. I'm not quite, I haven't quite taken all the pencil off. It's better to cut this just a Go big and work your way down than to cut it too small the first time because I've got a couple of them that I made. I've got one I made that I made it way too, um, I made it too small and it, there's gaps. Trim off just a little bit. That's what fits. Okay, I'm going to have to re glue this and I'm going to cut, I'm going to trim this little by little until I get it fit to fit inside. And when I get that cut off, I'll be back and we'll go on to the next step. All right, I ended up only needing one of those extra pieces I put on and I've got this cut as best I can. It's a little short in a couple of spots, but it will be fine. And we are going to, our next step will be to glue it in. But before we can glue it in, I cut a piece of, this is a little over 12 inches, so it'll be plenty long. It's a piece of kitchen string. This is our insurance because of the fact this paper and that little ledge, there's not enough space to make a good 
um, grip that would probably the first time you look at it cross-eyed the that bottom part would fall out if you just glued it by itself so what I do is I get this is just matte Mod Podge squeeze some out and we're going to coat this string that's our first step we want this to be pretty nice and sticky which is going to be messy which I don't like that part of this but by putting this this Mod Podge on not only will it keep the string from untangling um, it will also help it to stick better and this is going to be really messy this part now you're not going to use all of this you're going to have to trim it off and we have to work really quickly here and we want to use Mod Podge because it's a lot thinner than our tacky glue so it will soak into that string while it's sitting there now take my glue and I'm going to go around where that's where that piece is where we started a quarter inch down And yeah, I got a couple of a couple of pieces of mine a little shorter than I wanted them to. I had a little trouble getting it shaped just right. This is only the second time I've done this. So, all right, got our glue, and be try to have a couple of toothpicks that don't have too much glue on them handy because they will help you to kind of work this into where you need it to be. Now, remember the. The fat sides are going this way because this is actually the bottom we're looking at right now. That begins there. And I chose the string because it was a pretty good match to this. If you have embroidery floss that is a closer match to your fake wood, that would probably be better, but I don't have any of the right color. Now start your string on that wide piece. it into the glue and against the wall. I'll have a picture of how this looks once it's in place on the blog post for you. And blog post, there's always a link to the blog post that goes with this video in the video description. That's what first thing the day that the video goes up, as soon as I get out of bed, because I time my videos to come up at 6 a.m. my time, and I'm not usually up yet. Oh, these are crappy scissors. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Don't, don't stick to my fingers. Then I go in. First thing I do is I go in and I get the link to the specific videos. But up until that time, it's just going to take you to the blog and to the latest video that's up, and it'll be the one that goes to that video. I'm using the toothpick to just push that up as tight as I can without pushing anything down. And you see the, the string kind of blends in. I like to run another bead of glue right on top of that. Just a skinny one this time. You just want to get everything all stuck together. Off camera, I'm going to make sure that I have this all stuck really well. I'm going to get it up, get my head right over where I can see it better, but I've got it where you guys can see it better. 
All right, now this needs to dry thoroughly before we touch it. Um, the next step is to clean this mark off my tray. And you see, that's got glue on top of it. It's still wiping up just fine with a wet wipe. I love using Sharpie markers to mark things like this because they work really well. This would come off really well except it has glue on it. I might need some, uh, I'll probably need to scrape the glue off to get the end of that off, but I mark on here all the time with Sharpie and it comes off really well. So that is how that looks. This needs to dry really thoroughly before we mess with it. And our next step will be to cut the strips for the lid. So that's up next. So the glue is all dry on this one, so it's done. So now we're going to cut the strips for our lid. And I accidentally cut a quarter inch strip earlier, but that's fine because we need some quarter inch strips for the lid. So we are going to need, let's see. three strips at three quarters of an inch. Getting myself a space cleared off so I can actually cut. Oops. Now if I am careful and don't do any miscuts, my calculations tell me I can do both the lid and the basket out of this single piece of 12 by 12 paper. So we'll see how that goes. I'm only going to cut a couple more on camera and then I'm going to cut the rest off camera so that I don't bore you to death. But we need these three. Then we're going to need four at a quarter of an inch. And then I'm also going to cut some half inch strips. So when I get all this cut, I'll be back and I'll show you what I've got and we'll start working on the lid. All right, so everything is all cut. I have three strips at a half inch. These are going to be woven together to make our lid. So I'm going to paper clip these together so I don't lose track of them. Then we have four strips at a quarter inch and three at three-fourths of an inch. We're going to start out kind of like we did for our base. We're kind of building it backwards. So we're going to pick out one, the first one of these, and this is going to show on the inside. So that side looks okay. So we are going to, I'm going to go around kind of mark. So I'm going to have quite a bit of glue to do. Let's see, I'm gonna... Put glue right there. Put glue on that one. And I need a fresh toothpick. And again, this first strip will need to be pretty much completely dry before we put on the second strip because this is what is going to anchor everything together. So we're going to do that. I'm going to wrap this around our glass jar. And I found, I don't remember if I said this earlier or not, because I'm actually filming this over the course of three or four days at this point, because I'm doing this as I have time between other projects. Um, this glue, any glue you get on your jar, is just gonna wash right off. Just, I ran mine through the dishwasher and it came completely clean, no problem at all. My rubber, rubber band's not gonna work. It's a little too big to do just one strip. And because this is so narrow, we need to make sure we have a rubber band on it. All right. 
I am going to set this off to the side to let it dry. And when it's dry, I'll come back and we'll start on the next piece. All right, our lid is all dry and it looks pretty darn good if I do say so myself. Now I'm gonna take a piece of this, this is some of the string I cut off that's been saturated with the Mod Podge. And I am going to I'm going to use my toothpick to create an opening here. Let's see if I can get get that worked in there, and then kind of pick a couple of spots on your lid that are fairly close to the middle. And this, I would say, is probably an optional step if you don't want to add a handle. I wouldn't, you know, it's it's up to you. Totally up to you. Now don't use the handle to pick it up because that will not end well. I really need to get better scissors. I think my I think I think my Dollar Tree scissors have died. I've only had them about six years. So and then I'm just going to Blue. Do I have piece? blue here? And there we go. That will add us a nice convincing little handle. Kind of hold it for a few seconds. And now we have I think a fairly convincing looking bamboo steamer for the for the 18 inch dolls to use and I, I have a feeling there'll probably be some foods to go in here on the channel in the future. Um, I want to thank the Facebook uh, follower that asked that requested this project. I was already thinking about doing it for a long time on and off and I'm glad I got the incentive to do it because I love how this turned out. Um, I hope you enjoyed the project also. If you did, push the like button, leave me a comment. If you've got projects you want to see on the channel, let me know either in the comments here on the blog post or over on Facebook. As always, if you haven't subscribed and you enjoy my content, please hit the subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video and I will talk to you next time.